Hello, my name is Andrew and I'm the creator of TCG Automate. I truly hope that you enjoy the product and that it helps you scale your eBay store. And let me just give you a quick demo on how to get your account set up so that way you will have a smooth process for using TCG Automate. So you're currently on this page and what you'll want to do next is just go to continue onboarding. And then once you come here, you just want to enter your location. And this is for eBay purposes. All these are for eBay. So set the city and state that you're in. And if you're not in the US, then you can enter in just your city or region. So I will enter in just for example, Dallas, Texas, and then postcode would be, I'm just gonna enter in some random number, but just put in the first five numbers of your zip code. Or if you're again, outside of the US, enter that zip code as well. Then once that's ready, click next. And here you will select the country that you will be listing to. So I'm currently in the US, but if you're in Canada, the UK, Australia, Germany, Austria, Netherlands, you can also choose those. So select that and click next. And then right here, you're gonna to want to enter in your policy names. So if you don't have these set up, you can go here on this link and you can just create policies here. You'll have to set up a payment, return and shipping policy. And then what you'll wanna do once it's created is copy and paste these names. So right now I have default payment, default shipping and default return. So payment policy will be default payment, shipping policy will be default shipping, and return policy will be default return. And notice for the shipping policy, it needs to be a flat rate shipping. You cannot use a calculated shipping policy, otherwise it won't work. Then once that's complete, click save and next, and you will be ready to go. Very simple. And if you ever need to change anything, you can go to the settings page. You can connect your eBay account directly so that way you can sync your eBay policies and your store categories if you have them. And some other settings you could do are allow best offers, keep the watermark in the description, and update any templates you want. So the template that I like to use is just the default template that gets audited, added automatically, which has the card name, rarity, set name, number, and condition. Now, you can also add other things like the year, or the hard type or the finish, which means first edition, unlimited, reverse hollow, etc. And you can also add regular text in there like LP NM, which just means light plate near mint. Or you could directly say reverse hollow, which you could also just use the finish variable if you don't want to directly text or type it in. So feel free to play around with that and just do whatever you want. You can also add as many as you want over here. And just click save when you're finished so that's how you get all the settings set up now let's see how you can actually list a card so what you'll want to do is go to this list cards page and enter in a batch name so this will be your SKU system and basically when you get an order on ebay it'll say this item sold and the SKU number is for example po-1 and let's say it's like the 30th card in that batch it'll be po-1-30 so that way it's the 30th card in that section for your template you can select any template you have created i'm just going to go with the default one for now for store category this is optional but if you have store categories you can add them in in the settings page again now the floor price is just what the minimum price would be now for ebay you cannot sell things for below 99 cents so at a default you shouldn't have that number below one dollar and then also how it works is that if the market price is below your floor price, it will use the floor price. But if the market price is above the floor price, it'll use the market price. And then something I advocate is to sell your cards at like percent above market. So let's say you want to sell your cards at 50% above market. You could just enter in 1.5 to this market price multiplier. Or let's say you want it to be 30% above market. You could do 1.3 and so on. You can change this however you prefer. If you want it to be exactly what the market price is, just do one. Now for image type, you could do front and back, or you could do front only. And I like to show the back of the card because a lot of buyers prefer to see the back of the card. So I'll choose that. Card condition, I'm gonna go with near mint. You could also do light played, moderately played, and heavily played. Card game is where you choose the TCG or sport card that you're gonna be listing. So as you can see, there's a bunch of TCG and basketball, football, and baseball with more sports cards will be added in the future. And then card type and finish are both optional and they are dependent on the card game that you choose. And then finish is like what I mentioned earlier. And then 
Now we go on to the AI details. So these are optional, but they can help improve the prediction accuracy of the AI. So if you're uploading images from your phone, you're going to want to select phone images. What this does is it temporarily crops out the background so that the AI can have a cleaner image to reference. It doesn't actually crop the image that you list, but it temporarily does so, which has no impact on the actual listing. So don't be worried about that. And then something that's super helpful, especially for magic cards, is filter predictions by set. So let's just do magic for, for this example. But let's say I'm uploading a bunch of Lord of the Rings cards. I can type in Lord of the Rings, and then all these options will show up, and I'll just select whichever sets I want to include. And this way, the predictions will only predict cards from those sets, and it won't have anything else. And you can select as many as you want. You could also just choose one, or you could leave it blank if you want. Then another thing is if you don't want to directly include any sets, you can exclude sets from the prediction. And what this does is let's say I have a bunch of sets, but I don't want to include any of the pre-release cards. I can just exclude that so that way no pre-release cards will be predicted. And then the next thing you could do is filter predictions by rarity. So let's say I'm uploading a bunch of commons and uncommons. I can just select these two and then that's it. Now I won't have to worry about anything else being predicted because I have it filtered to only do commons and uncommons. And then also, if I wanted to exclude anything, I can exclude a specific rarity. So that's how that works. And now let's get into actually creating the batch. So with the cards I have taken images of are some ultra rares from Chilling Rain and Evolving Skies. So what you'll do is you'll go to your downloads or your documents folder and just select the cards that you want to upload. And so once you select them and upload them here, it'll show the cards. Make sure that if you're doing front and back images, the front of the card is shown first, and that's it. You don't want to have the back of the card shown first because it'll predict the card assuming the back is the first card. So make sure it's in the correct order and that it goes front, back, front, back, and so on. And just for simplicity, I'm going to narrow it down to Chilling Rain, and then you just submit the batch. And this process takes up to like 10 to 20 seconds, depending on how many cards you upload. If you're uploading a lot of cards, it'll be a little bit longer. And then once you finish, you'll be taken to this edit batch page. So at a first glance, all of it looks good, but we can see that this card is not correct. This Delhi bird, well, the actual card is Dr. Rainbow Rare, but it predicted that it's the Delhi bird from Chilling Rain. So what I like to do is I click on the show large preview. So what this does is it just shows the listing image and then what it matched with in an enlarged effect so that we can easily see which card is being matched. And for quick reference, you can look at these other predictions and then select them. But as you can see here, the Dr. Rainbow Rare is not there. So what I like to do is search for Dr. And then I'll enter in the number as well. And it takes me directly to this listing for this card. And all I have to do is select and that's it. It changes the title changes the pricing, the special or the finish and all of that. And then basically you can just go through all of them, make sure they're all correct. And as you can see here, they are all correct. So I don't need to change anything else. So then once that's complete, what I like to do, and this is completely optional, is combine duplicates. So what that does is, as you can see here, you have Galarian Articuno three times and we have Celebi two times. So if I click the combine duplicates button, it will combine all of these, and now I have the Galarian Articuno with a quantity of three, Celebi with a quantity of two, Zero Aura quantity of two. And this helps a lot for getting multi-card sales and slims down your eBay listings significantly. And then let's say you applied the wrong template or you wanna round up prices. You could also do that here and just click round up prices. So it rounds it up to the nearest dollar or nearest dollar in an increase amount. Or you could apply a template and just if you have more, you could change them. So if you ever make a mistake on that, you could always change it. You can also change the batch name if you want. And one thing I like to do is sort by market price so that way I can quickly change any prices if needed. And then obviously ignore cards where the market price is cheaper than the floor price. Then once that's complete, you can download the listings like this. So I'm gonna be downloading an eBay live listing. And then you just click download. And if you wanted to, you could do variation listings or Shopify or whatnot. And when you're doing variation listings, you have to have a parent image. So you would just select a file here, put your parent title, 
which is just like the overall listing title. And then you could sort the variations by alphabet or by card number. But for now, let's just do the simple live listing. So as you can see, it got downloaded. And then you can just upload your CSV directly to eBay and then click on this link. And then what you'll do is you'll click upload template, choose file, and then you select the one they want to upload. And I'm not going to do it right now because I don't have those cards anymore. But once you do that, the listings are going to be live in 10 seconds and that's it. Then you could delete the batch if you want. You can keep it if you want. But overall, that's how it works. And it's very simple and very straightforward. But obviously, not everything runs as perfectly as I just demonstrated. So if you ever have an issue or you need help with something, you can always reach out in the Discord with the link right here. Or you could contact me at contact at jamtcg.com and I will quickly respond to your messages. I try to respond to them within the hour or at the very least within the day. So don't hesitate to reach out and I will try my best to help you. And then also the other sellers and users in the Discord will also try their best to help you. And I will have videos on these other features. I'm sure you guys are curious about these, but I don't want to overload you guys with information. So I'm going to have other videos on those pages if you want to watch those. So thank you again for signing up and I hope you enjoyed TCG Automate.